Well, good morning or good afternoon. I uh, appreciate you uh, stopping by and listening to say it and welcome to today's informational exchange for our quadrosphere ball valve and our ringmaster seat design. I'm going to try to give you in about 45, 50 minutes as much information as I can and uh, hopefully uh, um, you know, being able to uh, answer a lot of questions for your customers and that. So uh, let's get started here. The um, presenter today, Larry Woodworth is the presenter and he is our business uh, development manager for uh, industrial products. And, and really, so I'm going to be doing um, all the talking today. Hopefully I won't bore too many people. So anyway, um, I got to do some uh, housekeeping before we get started here. So in the questions box, please feel free to ask any questions. Um, we will get to them at the end of the session. Um, I want to make sure that I have enough time to be able to go over all the material and uh, we'll do questions and answers at the end. If for some reason I can't get to all the questions uh, in the follow-up email, I will answer them. I will answer the remaining questions that we don't get to. So we'll uh, we'll make sure everybody gets the answers that they're looking for. Um, like I said, we have a, a handout um, after the presentation here, and, or tomorrow uh, you'll get a handout and, and that from this. So I would like to um, do the first poll question if I can here. And let me get this uh, launched. Now the the first uh, question is um, uh, how much experience do you have in uh, with industrial valves? So um, go ahead and um, you know put in your answers, and then we'll um, we'll go over here shortly. But in the meantime, as everybody's uh, uh, doing this. A little history of uh, Valmatic. Valmatic's been around for uh, over 50 years. And up until about six years ago, we've been making uh, water and wastewater valves to the AWWA standards. And about six years ago, we decided that we needed to uh, diversify, so we got into the industrial valves. And the quadrosphere ball valve was our first industrial valve. And since then, we've been putting more and more of our standard water valves into industrial applications. So we'll, uh, you know, uh, be able to uh, fit a lot of needs. So, but during the last 50 years, we have sold some of our water valves into industrial applications. Um, it wasn't our focus market, but we were able to uh, put some in various ones. So we're not that of a novice into the industrial applications and so on. So. Let's um, see what we have on our poll questions here. We'll close that out, and then we're going to share this with you. So the um, we've got 38% uh, being a novice. We have 46% very knowledgeable, and 15% are experts. This is good. This is very good. So we got a lot of uh, good quality guys on the phone here. So let's hide this thing and let's go on to uh, what we need to do. So um, before I hit the first slide, um, all this time our sales guys have been calling on municipal plants, water, wastewater facilities. And of course, they're usually in cities and things are pretty clean and they don't have to, to worry about too many uh, uh, safety hazards or anything like that. So um, this is the first industrial sales call from one of our sales guys. Um, of course, it's winter time, but uh, he, he went out to uh, visit the valve, to see the valve at the job site. And on the way, they encountered this little tiny roadblock. So the operators knew exactly what to do, so they jumped out of their pickup truck, grabbed their chainsaw and the chains, and they quickly took care of that fallen tree. So after that, they went on uh, about their business. And uh, for us in the industrial sector, we know that not all your industrial sales calls are going to be in clean or proper locations or in a city. So 
the first valve that uh, they visited was um, this particular valve. It had been in a couple months and uh, they had taken the insulation and stuff off so we could take a nice little picture of it and so on. But this is for an underground storage of uh, natural gas. So the reason why they picked the quadrosphere is because they have been having, uh, having problems. When they bring the natural gas back out of the underground storage, it comes up with minerals and sands and all sorts of other uh, things, and it was damaging their valves uh, that they had in service before. So we put the quadrosphere in, and now it's probably a good uh, almost a year that the valve's been in service and there's not been any problems. So it's um, it's been a good uh, good venture for them. So let's do the addenda, the induction we're just doing, the quadrosphere history, the quadrosphere design. Why choose the quadrosphere? Features, functions, and benefits, applications, ringmaster seating design. We'll go over our other valve products that we have a little bit, and then questions and answers. So that'll be the uh, the agenda for today. So let's do the history. Um, the quadrosphere was designed in 1994 uh, by a gentleman um, that is no longer uh, with the quadrosphere or uh, has anything to do with it, but he invented it to handle um, geothermal fluid applications. Okay, uh, he had been calling on these uh, geothermal plants, and they've been telling they were telling him they were having problems with ball valves and that in these applications. And he came up with this design, and it's been working just fine. So the valve was actually launched and manufactured, started being manufactured in uh, 2001 um, by a company called Concordia Valve Incorporated. And after a few years, they um, they went out of business. So Newman's valve picked up the uh, license and the technology, and they started producing the valve in 25, 2005. Um, they did that for a while. Uh, Cameron acquires uh, Newman's back in 2010. And in the 2012, um, the Quadrosphere took a fairly large order away from one of their Cameron's flagship valves, and they didn't like that. So therefore, they severed ties uh, with the uh, Quadrosphere valve. So in 2013, Valmatic acquires the exclusive rights to produce the Quadrosphere. So we've had it since 2013. Now, in August of 2017, we completely purchased the complete valve and the rights for the Quadrosphere and the Ringmaster seating system. So therefore, it is a viable Valmatic product nobody else is involved. So we have, you know, 20 years of over 20 years of proven experience uh, in performance in numerous type of applications. And we're going to go over some of those as we continue on here. So this is kind of a familiar package that you might see on the side of a road. Uh, it's a small little compressor station and there's API 60 trunnion ball valve, pipeline ball valves. Uh, which you could see in the picture there. And the, the compressor stations, what they do is about every 40 miles or so, they have to uh, repressurize the gas to keep it flowing down the pipeline. And that's why they have all these little stations. Now, some of them are quite elaborate and quite huge, depending on how many gas wells and stuff they have nearby, or they have to uh, you know, take care of and feed into the system. <clears throat> Excuse me. So why use a quadrosphere? What makes it better? Um, so what we've done is we've taken a standard ball and we've contoured the top, the bottom, and the two sides. And what this does is it adds four flow paths that flush out the ball cavity. And we'll go over this in a little bit more detail, but the key is the contoured ball. So here's the quadrosphere versus a standard ball. And you can see how the contours on the quadrosphere versus the standard ball being nice and round and, and, and so on. So we've, we've done a little uh, machining to that. So let's just talk about why ball valves fail right at the moment before we go any further. Seat damage or ball damage. Ball surface damage is quite prevalent in a ball valve if there's going to be 
debris, solids, scales, whatever in there. And then the seat gets damaged also because of this particular material. So in the lower left-hand side, if you have a valve that has any kind of abrasive buildup inside that ball cavity, it will start scratching the ball, scratch the seats, and the valve will a leak. And then the wire draw effect, and that's very uncommon in this particular valve, but you get a lot more of that when you have uh, control valves and stuff like that. But a standard ball and seat design. Now, a standard ball and seat are always touching. OK, so no matter what happens when this is going on is debris can get caught uh, around the seat area and then get caught in the ball cavity. So we'll show you on a profile of an ordinary ball. So as the flows coming in from the left with the debris in it, you can see how it collects between the ball and the ball valve cavity uh, because it can't go anywhere. The seats are holding that in place on the one side and then on the other side it's got the eddy effect which then pushes the uh, debris and stuff back on the other side. So what you have then is a cavity that gets filled with uh, all kind of uh, debris solids or whatever. So in an ordinary valve this is what you end up with with the seat or the uh, ball cavity being full of uh, any kind of debris or solids. So here's the profile for a quadrosphere valve. As you could see now, the flow coming from the left to the right, how the flow goes around the ball, okay? That's key, because there's nothing there to catch it now. So also remember we have flow paths on the top and the bottom of the ball. So now with those flow four flow paths plus the flow path through the valve, we have the cleaning action or the flushing action. Every time we open and shut the valve, that cavity gets cleaned out. So there's nothing in there that gets any kind of debris caught in there in that, okay? So the contour uh, ball, after it's been machined because of the machining and that on there, it leaves lip edges. Now these lip edges, as the ball goes open and closed, helps clean the seat off from any kind of debris scale or whatever that might get on there, okay? All right. So um, when we when the seat, uh, you know, when the ball goes open and closed and it scrapes off the seats and that because of these lip edges. So with the self-cleaning protected seats, the self-flashing budding chamber, this is what you get inside of a valve. And you can see the the uh, flow pass on the top and the bottom of the ball and then on the sides and of course through the wall. So you get a nice flow action through there to clean all that stuff out. So instead of this, this is what you get in the same particular application. So what I'd like to do is do the next poll question. And we're going to launch this. And what we have here is, have you ever seen this type of application of a valve failure? So please, uh, is, you know, get in and answer that and see what you can, uh, you know, come up with on that. And we'll see what your answers are. And we got everybody voting here. So looks like we've we're almost got everybody uh, completed on this. So cool. All right. So I'm going to close this out because it's going to give us a good idea what's going on here. Then I'm going to share this with you. And here's the results. So 50% have never seen this before, okay? And then 42% never have seen this uh, or had this problem before, but eight of you have experienced it. And that's okay. I mean, we're what we're doing with this particular valve is trying to solve problems for customers. And if you're talking to your customer and they're saying that they have these kind of problems and that, well, then this is where the valve, you know, is going to shine for them. So we're going to go ahead and get that out of the way. 
So let's do the features and highlights of the valve. The quadrosphere ball, of course, is the highlight. Wear resistant. Because the seat and the ball don't always touch, we have about 70% less wear. Lower torque in the running position. The, you know, because it, the, here again, the ball and the seat aren't touching, so then there's lower torques. The self-cleaning action of the seats. The multiple flow paths being able to flush out that cavity. The protected seating, so that way we don't have to worry about any kind of, you know, uh, things going wrong with that seat. Um, the hardened ball. Our normal ball is a hard chrome plate over uh, 316 stainless steel, uh, but that changes depending on the application, and we can put anything on there, and we'll kind of go over all the different uh, things that we can do with that ball. Uh, the stem seals. Um, basically, they're all O-rings because uh, it is an API 6D design ball valve. So therefore, we have the stem seals and that are all going to be O-rings. Then we need the emergency injection fittings, and we'll kind of go over that a little bit, a little bit uh, later too. So um, designs. Uh, the valve is bidirectional. Yeah, it means it can seal in either direction, so we're, uh, we can do that with no problem. Um, blowout proof stem, an anti-blowout proof stem. This is pretty standard on most ANSI ball valves. And as long as the valve is designed to be 1634 standards, it's gonna have an anti-blowout proof stem. The stem seals and bearings, I bring this up because being able to flesh out that center cavity of that ball, the debris does not settle around any bearings or seals or anything to cause any kind of problems. So that makes it very unique in what's going on. If you can't do that, then the buildup in that cavity gets around the bearings and the seals and they tend to get uh, damaged. Okay. So this is a, a picture of, uh, a, our industrial view. Now, what view means to us is Valmatic Information Exchange Workshop. And we just had one a couple months ago and it was for the industrial valves. And here's a couple of gentlemen that are taking apart a quadrosphere to learn how to replace the uh, O-rings and the seat and so on. And the gentleman in the background there is uh, Steve Dalton, who is our Director of Engineering. And here's another uh, picture of a uh, few guys taking apart uh, quadrosphere ball valves. And uh, the reason why we gave them two inch valves to uh, take apart and that is because they can pick them up and handle them a lot easier than, a, than giving them a 12 inch valve that would need a crane or anything else. So industry standards, okay. Um, our valve is designed to be 1634 and API 6D. Now the face-to-face -face dimensions are to API 6D and 95% of the time, 98% of the time, they all meet B1610. I think there's only a couple uh, instances where they don't. So we're, we're all the face-to-faces to should uh, match all your other valves that will be out there. Now, uh, flanges are to be 16.5, inspected and tested to API 6D. Uh, we have ISO 9001, fire safe to API 607, and I believe we're up to the uh, addition number six. Mounting dimensions for the uh, flange on the top is to ISO 5211. The valve always comes in nace prepped unless we uh, order it otherwise, and it's nace to MRO 103 and MRO 175. Uh, fugitive emission, we did a test on our standard valve and we passed the ISO 15848-2 standard, okay? So we can, you know, claim that we have zero emissions um, and we have certificates for that, that we can provide to you. So to kind of give you an idea on the testing of these valves, uh, because the valve uh, is, is tested and inspected to API 6D and 598, the shell test is at 1.5 times the rating of the valve. And in this case, the, this is a 600 pound valve, six inch, and it's rated, normal rating of it is 1,480 PSI. And this is at 100 degrees 
uh, Fahrenheit. So the shell test, the pressure would be 2,225 PSI. Now the seat test is done at 1.1 times the rating of the valve at 100 degrees. So the seat test is done at 1,650 PSI for a six cent or for a 600 pound valve. Now we can also too, depending on your customer's requirements, do a low pressure test with air or an inert gas at 80 PSI. So we can provide that if your customer so desires. Now the test duration and leakage um, is based on the um, size of the valve for the timing. The uh, leakage rate is depending on the material of the uh, seats in the valve. So we have to worry about that. But a funny little story. Um, when we first got the valves and we got our test rig to test the valves, um, we had you know engineers and manufacturing people and that uh, around you know, wanting to witness the first test um, of the valve. So I picked up a six inch, 600 pound valve and I put it on the test rig. Now, please remember or note that we've always been a water and wastewater valve company to AWWA standards. Highest pressure is normally about 250 PSI. So it's not very high pressure. So when I started up the test rig, and we started getting up about 2,000 PSI. This is what the engineers and the manufacturing people did. Uh, they did a little moonwalk backwards. And I thought they had coordinated this. Um, it, it was perfect sync. Everybody did it at the same time. And I wish I had a video. That would have been pretty neat to have uh, been able to pass that around. So um, seats and seals. So not only does the valve have a rating based on the ANSI standards, um, but you also have to worry about the soft parts, the plastic parts inside the valve, whether or not they're gonna be able to match the application you're talking about or the customer's desiring. So some of the seat materials we have is reinforced Teflon, peak, nylon, Devlon. We have a carbon fiber filled peak material that goes up to about 580 degrees, which is doing very well. And then we have metal seats. O-ring material, um, we, we have it or we've provided um, Aflas and Kimrez, Marquez and Kelrez and Vitons and, and special materials that we provided in different applications. Graphite for little higher temperatures and so on. So we don't have a problem coming up with, you know, um, any O-ring materials or anything like that for anybody. So let's uh, uh, for a minute here. So our standard seat is called the single piston effect seating. And according to API 6D, it's a double block and bleed, okay? Um, and I think everybody knows what double block and bleed is, but uh, we'll kind of go, go over it a little bit. Double block and bleed means that you can, when you have pressure on the upstream and downstream side, that you can bleed off that center cavity. So if you have any excess gas or some kind of thing special or whatever, you can bleed that off. So if we just kind of look at what happens to the standard seat and how it works, if you have pressure coming behind the seat, let's go to the left side, behind the seat ring along with that spring, it pushes the seat ring up into the ball and it seals it off. Now the same way to the downstream side. The pressure goes behind the seat ring with the, along with the spring and it pushes the seat ring into the ball and it seals it off. So therefore, if you have equal or pretty equal pressure on both sides, you can now vent that cavity and there won't be a problem of any excesses leakage. However, in this particular design, there could be a problem. So if we have pressure on the upstream side and it's pushing the seat ring to the ball and everything's fine, the center cavity, let's say, starts to pressurize. Um, it starts to get hot and it starts to expand and the downstream uh, pressure becomes less than what's inside that cavity. That seat will actually move backwards and become a self-relieving seat. And that's a lot of times you don't want that, okay? 
So that seems to be the caution point for this particular valve design. So our inside people um, have been uh, taught and they ask the question. So whenever you come in for a double block and bleed application, they will ask you what your application is to make sure that this is going to be suitable for you and your application. If not, we have a optional seat called the double piston effect seating system. Now, according to API 6D, this is a double isolation and bleed valve, which means that no matter what happens, it's going to isolate that cavity and you can bleed off that center section. So let's kind of go over what the double block and bleed piston effect seat is. Now remember, piston effect is meaning that the seat slides in and out like a piston in your car. Okay. So looking at the, the upstream side or the left side of the screen, the pressure goes behind, pushes the O-ring and the seat and the springs, push that seat ring into that ball to do the sealing mechanism. Now it does the same thing on the on the downstream side, okay? Just like the single piston, everything's fine. However, if this starts to happen where the center cavity starts to overpressure, what happens then is it will go behind the downstream seat, push the O-ring downstream, push that seat ring forward and seal off the ball. So, um, and, and that'll happen automatically. You don't have to worry about the, the ball, you know, the, the ball valve doing this. All this happens on, uh, without being said. So um, you can have, you know, that situation. And let's say what happens is um, your, your downstream seat or, or your downstream piping or whatever became uh, unpressurized and you don't need to have any flow down there for whatever reason, this will take it up take care of that. Now, the way I remember it is a single piston can only seal in one direction. And to me, the double piston, then that seat can move in either direction so it can do double duty. So it can do go either way. Okay. So what I'd like to do is throw in the last polling question here. And we're going to launch this. And basically our question is, do you have any valve applications that require double block and bleed currently, or does the valve uh, uh, isolate uh, you know, the cavity that you're using? So we'll let everybody do uh, this. So let's see, uh, looks like just about everybody is voted here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, share this with you. So here's what we have here. So as you can see, um, we have uh, a good percentage um, that uh, have yes, uh, they have it, 77% said no. So. Um, so yeah, so it's, 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 it's good to understand that. So if in case you come across that, um, in your activities at the plant or, you know, talking to customers or whatever, uh, at least you'll have an idea of, of what to go in and talk to. Okay. So we're going to hide that and we'll go to the next slide. So this is, uh, a picture of a, um, uh, I call it a parent and child. Uh, to be politically correct. Um, it's a four inch, 1500 pound quadrosphere and a two inch, 600 pound quadrosphere. And these are on hydrogen production at ADM in Decatur, Illinois. We also have hydrogen production valves at a refinery in Tyler, Texas. Um, and they work great. And what was causing them to revert to our valve or come to over our valve is making hydrogen, you actually get a very fine powder, almost like a, uh, a coal dust. Uh, and it was actually filling up the cavities and destroying the valves that they had previously. With the quadrosphere, that's not happening. 
So we've got numerous valves and hydrogen applications at high ADM, and they've been working for years and never a problem. So, but anyway, the, the two inch, the little valve there does want to grow up and be the big one someday. So just to let you know. The emergency sealant injection fitting. Um, this is part of the API 60 design. And what happens is if, like say you have a gas, mainly gas and so on, or even a, a liquid, you can go in there and you can push, uh, put grease around the seat ring to be able to do a, 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 if, uh, a sealing action if this actual seat has been you know, uh, gouge worn out or whatever, you can actually go in and put that bead of uh, grease around there to do a temporary seal and to get into repair. Now, we've also found another way to uh, take care of that and, and use those connections. Optional materials. Um, the body materials, we could do LF2, LCB, duplex, our standard is carbon and stainless, of course. Um, but I also got a, uh, a current application uh, request for some coker valves and they want uh, uh, nine chrome and the factory can do that too. So we can do all sorts of special things. Seed inserts, uh, again, he's, these are you know pretty much our standard stuff, but we can find any plastic material that can we can make, uh, depending on your application, we can do as a seed insert. The seat rings generally fall into the same category as what the trim materials are gonna be. So the ball, the stem, the seat rings or whatever are usually all the same material. And we can do those here again in any material that's required. Uh, you know, stainless, carbon, electrolytic nickel plated, uh, LF2, 410 stainless, whatever. Uh, seal materials here again, here's the other uh, support uh, of the, what we do for the seals. The same kind of thing. If we need to find a material for an O-ring based on an application you have, we will find it. And so far I've been able to find just about every O-ring that's been required. Uh, the stem materials, the stem materials here again are based on the application. So if you have a lot of solid stickies or whatever, we have to go to a stronger stem material. And we can do 17 for pH, duplex stainless steels, nitronic 50s, whatever the case may be. Now, as far as the, the surface of the ball, and we'll put the metal seat in there with that, we can do any kind of coatings on these uh, parts, the ball and the seat surface. We could do stellite, Electrolytic nickel plating, excuse me, uh, carbide coating, tungsten carbide coating. So whatever it would take here again, based on your application, to be able to uh, provide a um, a seating surface for a metal seat or a ball. The uh, chart on the right hand side there is the temp temperature limits of each of the different plastic materials or rubber materials that we use. So you have an idea of the, the highs and lows of where they can go in different temperatures. This is a, uh, a copy of what's in B1634 for the pressure temperature ratings of the valve. But um, it's very simple and helps you kind of pick out if, if the customer's not telling you what ANSI class or ASME class it is, is you could kind of pick out what which he's going to need. So let's say if we have 400 degrees at 900 PSI, we would have to go by the chart and go over and say, okay, that's going to be a class 600 pound ball valve just because of the pressure and temperature requirements that the customer is giving you. So that kind of helps you out a little bit. Flow coefficients, um, engineers like this because it helps them with their piping system to make sure the valve is gonna have enough flow. Our valves being full port as standard is gonna be the same as the inside diameter of the pipe. So there's really not that big of a deal that any engineers really need to know this, but in case they do, we have the flow coefficients for you. Now, industry applications. I'm not gonna go every one, over every one of these, but 
let's just pick uh, oil and gas. We can do compressor stations. We can do heat exchangers. We can do pig launchers and receiving receivers, uh, fracking water applications. And that we can also do uh, SAG D, which is uh, stands for Steam Assisted Gravity Drain, and we've been doing that. Salt domes, we can do um, uh, the making of the salt dome and the storage and the wells for it. Um, salt domes are are made by putting water and chemicals into a, a salt kind of area, and it makes a big storage, a big dome, and during the making of it, the valve, of course, is going to see, you know, the brines and the, the minerals and everything else and sand and so on. Um, and that's going to be coming up through the valve. And they were having problems. We got our valves in there. They work beautifully. And we've been doing that ever since. And also, too, with the storage of uh, the salt in the domes and otherwise. So, you know, it, even if you have a storage cavity that's already been made and you put in natural gas and you pull it back out, like we went over before, you're going to get all that debris and salts and everything else through there, and that's what damages the valves. Uh, refineries, we can do different types of applications and refineries, hot oil, isolation, gas, and so on. Um, and we're going to add to the list of uh, hydrogen production valves also, too, in refineries. Geothermal, we've been doing geothermal for, for a while, and we'll be doing it on the concentrated brines and natural gas along with the master valve and the crown valve on the Christmas tree, and then in the vent lines. Power, uh, fly ash, uh, slurry, crude oils, low pressure steams, uh, chemicals. We've been getting into all sorts of different chemicals uh, for lock copper isolations, reactor feeds isolations, you know, whatever that has a um, abrasive uh, material to it, okay? Uh, pulp and paper, petrochemical applications, mining with the tilings and that, wastewater with the different industrial sludges and so on we'd be getting into. So there's a lot of different applications we've gotten into. So let's just go with the uh, some slides and show you some pictures of uh, some applications. Now this happens to be a salt dome brine well, and it is in Louisiana. Now there is eight quadrospheres on this Christmas tree right here. So you know, uh, pretty cool. But anyway, I was at this location in Louisiana and that little dark area in the back, uh, there is actually a swamp. And I was in the back looking at these valves and talking to the operator and so on. And um, he, he, you know, said to me, he says, um, don't move. And I kind of looked at him. He says, no, don't move, just stay real still. So he, he then walks over to his truck and gets this tool that kind of looks like a pitchfork type of thing. And he walks up behind me. And a couple seconds later, he says, OK, you can you can move now. And I turned around and looked. And here he's carrying this uh, big snake over to the uh, swamp to uh, put it back into the swamp. And uh, he told me it was a water moccasin. So we quickly left that area um, <laughs> and um, went on about business. So this is, um, to kind of go with that, is a uh, the making of a salt dome. And all these valves, you know, go into putting the water in and pulling it out and chemicals and so on and so forth. And the blue valves are our quadrosphere. Now, the gray ones and the white one in the front here are orbit valves that we have replaced, okay? Um, and the reason why we replaced the orbit valves is because the orbits were having problems and being damaged by the media coming up. So what was happening on the orbits, because it's a single seat with like a single uh, uh, ball disc or whatever you want to call it, um, it keeps scaling up on the seat area and on the ball. So when they go to go closed, it tends to scratch and become very... Uh, damaged uh, because of all that. And because there's nothing in that body to get rid of or flush it out, eventually the body becomes full of um, all the debris and everything else. Um, it, it works. And like I said, we have replaced all those orbits and they're all uh, Valma our, uh, uh, Valmatic quadrosphere valves now. So the um, 
another brine application. Uh, I, it seems like I'm picking on the brine applications, but this one is in the storage, and they were having problems with the the brine scaling up inside the valves. And we were able to put in a special coating on the inside of the valve that prevents the scaling uh, part of it. And so then the valves have been working very great. Also, too, with the flushing feature of the cavity, um, that's put the valve in there. And if I remember right, we're still the only valve for these particular applications. Now, this is uh, a pig launching and receiving uh, station for BP pipeline, and this is in a crude oil uh, pipeline. Uh, so what they were having the experience here again is their other valves after a couple uh, operations were becoming destroyed or damaged because of all the stuff that's inside the pipeline. Um, and, you know, the pipelines, uh, whether it be oil or gas, contain rust and and wax balls and paraffin balls and, and all sorts of other things. And of course, being crude oil, it's gonna have uh, deposits and minerals in that because it hasn't been filtered. So all those things attributed to the other valves being damaged, but our quadrospheres are working just fine. Then um, this is the, there's uh, one of our quadrospheres being installed in a fly ash application at a TVA plant in the uh, the south, and it's a coal fire plant. And what they do is they take the fly ash and they put it in a settling pond. It settles out. Then what they do is they take the water from the settling pond and they bring it back into the uh, to the plant uh, to recircuit. And what happens? It brings some of the fly ash back in with it. And the valve that they had in this particular application here again was being damaged because the flushing act, you know, because it didn't be, wasn't able to flush out all that stuff that got caught in that cavity. So our valves have been in there, and from what I still remember, TVA it has uh, standardized on our valve in this particular application. First valve off a well. Uh, the blue valve there happens to be a quadrosphere. Now coming out of the well here again, like I've been saying, we got. Whatever has been in that storage or in the well or whatever is coming up through the valve. So we've got all sorts of debris and junk and stuff coming in through with it. Uh, so they were having problems and our quadrosphere can take that and do the shutoff. Now this is the master valve of a geothermal brine uh, application at a geothermal plant. Now that valve here again is seeing all the junk coming back out of the, uh, out of the ground, okay? And um, that valve um, is special because it has a uh, special ID in it. Uh, normally, the ID for a 16-inch valve would be 16 inches. This one has been, happens to have a 16 and 3 quarter inch ID. And the reason why that is, is they want to be able to put a drill bit down through the valve to help clean out the pipe and stuff so that way if the flow keeps coming through. So um, the valve also is uh, is for that. So we can get into there. So uh, here's one more of a uh, barge offloading Dow in a Dow pipeline down in uh, the Gulf Coast. What was happening when they were getting the 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 nap and stuff out of this barge? It was also getting all the the scale and stuff and dirt and whatever that had accumulated in there, um, in with it. And then, um, so it was damaging the valves as it was, you know, being offloaded off the barge to go to the uh, to refinery and stuff. So they were having problems and we were able to take care of that. Uh, I believe this is the last one. This is on SAG-D production. And um, here again, SAG-D means steam assisted gravity drain. So basically what happens and what's going through our valves that are there is uh, the, the bitumen that they're mining out of the ground in the oil sands up in Canada. So the bitumen contains all the, the, the oil and, and sand and everything else. Then they put this mixture in a big um, vat, so to speak, okay? Lack of a better word. And um, they introduce steam chemicals and have to separate the oil from all the sand. 
So when that happens and they get that all done, they skim off the oil and then the, the sand and minerals and whatever else that's in there go through our valves uh, back on up to the system. So it's a kind of a nasty application, but we've been doing very well and they're very pleased with the performance of our valves. So before we just go on, I mean, the whole thing about all these applications where we put this quadrosphere is because of the ability to flush the cavity of any kind of debris or solids and the self-cleaning seat design. That has been the key to the success of this valve. So our scope is two inch to 24 inch, ASME rated 150 to 2,500 pound in, uh, ASME class. Now we have quoted um, on larger sizes, uh, all the way up to 48 inch, depending on what the application is. So if you do have something above 24, you give us a ring, send us the email or whatever, and we'll see about uh, helping you out on that. Options. We can do an extended bonnet. Uh, this is starting to get into uh, higher temperatures. Uh, we can do live loaded packing, the double piston effect seats, uh, special coatings on the inside, the nice preps and so on. Uh, as I explained before and touched on, we can do low pressure seat tests, depending on your customer requirements. In connections, flange is a standard standard race face flanges, but we can do butt weld and ring tongue joint. That's no problem. A list of some of our customers. Uh, this isn't a complete list, but we just threw uh, these guys out there. So some chemical plants that we've done, TVA uh, with Texas Brine, uh, Enbridge, Incana, Suncor, National Fuel Gas, um, Ormat, Shell, we have valves on Shell, uh, platforms out in uh, the Gulf of Mexico there, uh, BP Pipeline, Cal Energy, Cal Pine. Uh, so we've got quite a few uh, uh, customers uh, out there that we've dealt with, some big ones. Uh, typical users would be pipelines, of course, uh, power plants, uh, offshore uh, unloading and, and loading and so on, uh, gas transmission, uh, of course, oil and gas production, chemicals, petrochemicals, and geothermal, and other ones that we haven't gotten into yet, or have been in, but they're not on the list. I do have to tell you this, and we've recognized this. Um, in certain instances, <clears throat> the um, seat pocket behind the seat where the um, uh, springs and stuff are. Sometimes, depending on a scale or a powdery substance, could get clogged so the seat cannot do its job of being the piston effect to be able to go in and out and seal off the ball. So we've recognized this in certain applications. That's why we designed the Ringmaster seating system. So let's introduce that to everybody. So we designed this in the mind that we were going to have powders, debris, scaling problems, those kind of things that could impair the operation of the standard valve. So let me let me go over the design here with you real quick. So remember me saying that the line pressure in the in the line also helped the standard single and double piston effect seats to move over to the ball to do the shutoff along with the spring. Well, what we did is we designed so that way the pressure behind the seat is caused by an external force, okay? So no media can get behind that seat to cause any kind of scaling or buildup of any kind of dirts or whatever. And having the, the external force, we can keep that media clean so that there is nothing that's going to get caught behind there so that seat's always going to do its job okay and then so we pressurize the back of that seat to be able to match the media and to do this the sealing mechanism so here's kind of like what the two seats look like um it doesn't matter if you have pressure on the upstream side the downstream or whatever because these seats are now independent from one another and they don't rely on the pressure inside the valve, 
they rely on the outside external pressure doing the sealing mechanism, okay? So therefore, if you, you, you look at this, we could almost call this a double isolation and bleed system because now we have both seats uh, energized independently. So we can go either way, do anything, and nothing's going to be affected on that, okay? So um, this is for like uh, grease or uh, hydraulic oils or whatever. This is an accumulator type of system. So we fill that pocket behind the seat with a nice clean grease or hydraulic oil or whatever. Then we pressurize the, the system, got the pressure gauge and stuff there. We shut it off and we set the accumulator to a pressure that's going to give us the sealing mechanism that we need based on your line pressure. Now, just give you an example is if you have 250 PSI line pressure, we're going to require that the pressure behind the seat be at least 50 PSI more than that. So it's going to end up being like 250 PSI. But we'll tell you what that pressure is going to have to be depending on whatever line process and pressure and stuff that you have. So that external force, it's doing its job. Now, here's a kind of a setup for a gas. Uh, this can be air, nitrogen, whatever. Here again, the gases are going to be clean, so there's no debris or anything to cause that seat not to do its job. So we got the filter and the regulator and the pressure gauge and that. We shut this all off and it does it. What's kind of nice about doing this setup is uh, if they're out in the country or whatever, they can put a nitrogen bottle right next to the valve and just pressurize it with the nitrogen and then walk away and they don't have to worry about it. They have a, a source of pressure for the back of that seat at all times. So, so that's the Ringmaster seating system, and it's designed to be able to take a lot of the powders and scaling problems and everything else that the standard valve may not be able to handle, okay? This is what it looks like on the outside of the valve. So uh, it's stainless steel piping because the valve was stainless steel, but we can also, of course, do it in carbon steel or whatever. Okay. our um, other products that Valmatic makes. Now, one of the things that uh, we've done since we've started the industrial division is find out applications that we can put our standard valves into for industrial side. But if you think about it, every industrial facility has water coming in and wastewater and stuff on the, on the opposite side. So there's opportunities for our valves right there. Um, so next time you're walking through the parking lot to go into the, uh, to uh, whatever company, just look around for the uh, pump shed or whatever on how they bring water into the plant. So, but check valves, um, we have our swing checks, we have our silent check valves, the inline check valves, the tilting disc, the dual disc check valves. But the one that's working out the best in industrial applications is the swing flex and the surge buster. The reason for that is, is they can take more of any kind of solids that might be in the in the media, uh, like dirty water or whatever. They could take that sludge applications. They can take that. We can also line the valve uh, with different linings so that way it can get into all sorts of different applications and so on. Air valves. You always need air valves to get the air out of your pipe. Okay, that's when it's filling the system, you need air valves to get the air out, uh, to shut it off around pumps, uh, especially. I mean, sometimes people don't realize that you have to have, you know, an air valve there to get rid of the pump, uh, the air coming off that pump. Um, also next to uh, meters, um, you need an air valve there because a lot of the flow goes going to your meter, especially if you're getting false readings, has air in it. So you need to get that out of there. And fortunately, we can make a lot of those out of stainless steel. So this would be on the air side or on the wastewater side or on the waste side. So we can go, um, you know, and give you a lot of different choices and so on. Now, um, as far as the quarter turn valves, of course, we've been talking about the quadrosphere, but we also have a nice butterfly valve that we can, you know, it's a rubber seated, but we can also get into uh, some linings of it and that. And so that makes a great little valve for some small slurries, dirty waters and so on. 
Um, we have uh, our energy ball valve that we kind of use mainly for being an automated check valve, but we can use it for other things also. So that's something that we might want to look at for a different application. And then the plug valve. Uh, here again, the plug valve is versatile. It can get into sludge and, and other things. We can uh, rubber line it and we can glass line it so we can get into some chemicals and some other things. So we have a lot of versatility on what we can offer besides just the quadrosphere valve. Now, questions and answers. Now, I don't show any questions that anybody has asked. So I'm, a, I'm assuming that we don't have any questions out there, but if you do, um, you know, please don't hesitate. Um, I believe everybody's got my email address. It was on the invite and so on. Um, email me any questions that you may have. I'll be more than glad to help you, or I'll pass you on to our reps that can also answer your questions. So anyway, um, if you do have any questions, let me know later on and we can take care of it. So, uh, oh, hold on a second. So that's the, the end of our uh, presentation. I do wanna thank you for your time so much. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Hopefully you've got something out of this and there'll be a brief survey um, after you log off. Um, give me some honest opinions on what you think. But here again, thank you. And uh, we appreciate you uh, listening in for the day. Thank you so much. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.